we're going to be talking about rope work. Now, why do I not say knot tying? There's more into it that goes into it than that, than just knots and knot tying. There's some basics of the basics, and then there's also rope work that's not knots that you will earn or learn, I should say. Uh, there's hitches and knots, and there's various other th that forms of rope work that we'll get into. This is the basics of the basics. So the first thing you need to learn before we jump into the knot tying is the rope. Now, first of all, I want to talk about a couple different kinds of rope. This is a nylon rope that is, um, it's called kern mantle. So basically what that means is there's an inside and an outside. There's this outside sheath and then there's an inside um, portion that gives us its strength. But it's also synthetic. This rope here is a uh, natural fiber rope. Once again, uh, there's a lot of natural fiber ropes out there. The problem is they're not in great use today simply because of the sheer strength of your uh, synthetic fibers. <clears throat> but we'll talk about these as well, and they're always good because one of the nice things about a natural fiber rope is with any knot, the... Um, the friction that it puts on itself, the pressure it puts on itself, is what keeps that knot from untying and coming loose. Natural fibers are great for that. But first, let's talk about the parts of a rope. A lot of y'all may have thought, there's one part called the rope. Well, there's actually two parts that you'll be, that, and, and it's the real key to it is that as we talk about knots and hitches and the rope work going forward, I'll refer to two parts of it that will be specific. One of them is the standing end of a rope, and one is the running end of the rope. Ought to be pretty obvious which is which. Uh, the standing end is the part that does nothing. It's just there. The running end is the part that works. So let's say, for instance, we're tying a bowling knot. In a bowling knot, Let's just, I'm not going to teach you how to tie it, but to kind of put it in perspective, this would be the standing end here. It's the part that's just going to be there. Yes, I started out doing something with it, but all of a sudden, okay, it's now not doing anything. Your running end is the part that actually does the rope, the work, and the knot tying. And yes, I did put that backwards. So it would be the part that comes up, runs around, goes in, comes down, and ties the knot. So keep that in mind, you're standing in, it's not doing anything, and your running in is the part that's, well, it's active because it's running. Pretty easy to remember. Thankfully, they used pretty decent terms when we did that. Couple other things we need to talk about before we get started on how to tie these knots and hitches. And that is, what do you do when rope comes, becomes frayed? Now, fraying happens at the end of a rope that, I can show you better on this, that basically it starts coming apart. And it happens on a lot of different ropes, especially when it's cut. Now there's a couple ways, there's a lot of ways to, um, to prevent that. I wanna talk about two specific. One of them is a skill that, strangely enough, it is kind of old world. People don't do it anymore. But uh, there's two different ways to, to get rid of that frame. One is to fuse the rope which we'll, uh, we'll show you here in, a, here in a minute, is basically burning the ends of the rope. And it fuses the, the, the fibers together. This is done on a synthetic piece of rope, a ni on nylon. Be very careful when you do that though. Any of these, especially any of the things that we'll be talking about that has to do with fire, make sure you have adult supervision if you're uh, one of our youth that are watching this. So we'll get into how to fuse that here in a minute. One of the things that can happen, depending on where you buy your rope, is they can have a hot knife. So when they cut it, let's say it's through here, it'll cut it and it'll fuse it automatically. And you can do that with any size of nylon rope. Now, on the other side of it, you can't do that with natural fibers. Uh, no matter what kind of natural fiber it is, whether it's cotton or hemp or any other number of natural fibers, you can't do that, why? because natural fiber burns. And so we don't wanna, we, we can't do that, but we can do what's called whipping the end of the rope. And that's what you'll see here, and here in a minute I'll show you how to do that. Whipping the end of the rope binds that rope together. 
Now, I will tell you a couple other things to be careful with. There are ropes out there that are very inexpensive, and in their inexpensiveness are very cheap. I do say there's two different kinds. A cheap and inexpensive are not always the same thing. I bring that up because some of those ropes, for instance, you have a nylon rope that has been woven together similar to this. Um, this is twisted, but woven together similar to, to natural fiber ropes. It's generally a yellow rope. You can buy it in any big box store. If you have to have that, that's fine, but it doesn't bind real well, and it also does not fuse real well. So I will steer you clear of that. Uh, that would be my one suggestion when you're buying rope, buy quality rope. Rope in some cases can be a lifesaver and in other cases it can just be uh, a, a, a gear saver. But you want to make sure you have quality rope no matter what kind of rope you're using. Right now though, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to step outside and I'm going to show you how to fuse a rope and also how to whip the ends of a rope. But first, we got to finish our coffee. I'll see you outside. Let's talk about synthetic materials. This is a nylon kern mantle rope, which basically means it's got an inside kern and an outside mantle. It's two pieces. It's very strong, very durable, but it is nylon. We're actually going to, instead of using a match or a, a lighter, uh, and if you went to a store that you could cut this at, generally they'll have, um, they'll have a hot knife and you just, when they cut it, it burns it. We're going to do this with a propane torch. Now, I will tell you, if you're a, if you're uh, one of our young people that are watching this, make sure you have adult supervision with this. Uh, parents or leaders, make sure that you uh, put some safety precautions in. But we're going to get close, let you see up close how this works. So we're really close now. So, but what we're going to do is you can see this rope is starting to fray a little bit. And the whole point behind fusing or whipping this is to keep it from fraying. Now... We're going to start off once again. We're going to use, you can't really see it real well, but we're going to use this uh, propane torch. And one thing you don't want to do is hold your rope like that because it will melt over top of you. So you're going to put it out to the side and we're just going to burn it. Turn it all around and you can see it kind of handles itself. Now that's going to be hot for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and do the other end once again. You're just kind of putting that flame all around it. If it catches, just blow it out. You're not wanting it to catch on fire. I got that down a little bit. I apologize for that. Hopefully you can see it here. You can see, let's turn this off. You can see, I hope up close, I don't know if that'll focus in or not, but it, uh, it kind of binds and fuses and melts on itself. And basically that's what you're doing. You're fusing the end of a rope to keep it from, um, from coming apart. Now, let's move back a little bit. Let's talk about whipping the ends of a rope. Whipping a rope. Whipping a rope is a skill that honestly a lot of people don't have because we don't in this day and age use a lot of natural fiber ropes. Your natural fibers, once again, your cotton, um, hemp, um, any other, any, there's, there's all kinds of natural fibers out there. You can, if you go out here into these woods that are right here where I'm at, you can find just a variety of material to make rope out of. But the hardest part about it is because of it's a, it's a fairly loose braid, it is going to easily come apart if there's not something on the end to keep it from coming off. Now, a lot of people will take um, big, huge metal clips and clamp it down, but a very nice skill to have is how to whip the ends of a rope. This is one of the earliest skills that, uh, I mean, this goes back centuries. As long as we've been using rope, they've been doing something to tie this. Now, you'll see a lot of people, because they don't know this, they'll actually tie a knot in the end of it. Well, you can see, let's just do that. Let's tie a knot in the end. That's just an overhand knot, which is not going to keep it from coming unraveled. But look how much rope I, uh, I can't use anymore. Now I'm going to put my hand right below that knot. Let's take that out. That's about a foot of rope that on this, uh, it's probably half inch natural fiber rope. 
that is not going to be used anymore because I tied a knot in it. However, whipping it, completely different story. So let's jump right into how to whip it. Let's take a closer look at what whipping looks like. All right, we're back close again. <laughs> so right here, what you have is a whipped end of a rope. And you can see, and whipping doesn't have to be this much. Um, basically what you've done, and I'll, I'll show you in detail, it's fairly easy once you figure this out. When, um, But you're going to want to start down a little bit, but you want to get as close to the end as possible without get, getting so close that it will come off the end. You can see I've left about three quarters of an inch here, depending on what part of the rope you're on. So you're going to, a lot, if you can, the best time to do it is before you cut it, but that's not always possible. So how do you do this? Number one, you're wanting to use the material you use generally. It doesn't have to be synth uh, synthetic or um, natural, either one, as long as it will bind on itself. And you want it to be in, you know, if you're using a real thick rope, you wouldn't want to use something real, real small. So you, you want your, your whipping material to be durable and in a size that's going to actually bind really well and be easy to turn so let's go ahead the other end of this rope needs a little work so let's see what we can do with that all right here's the end of the rope you can see it's not frayed but that's our purpose is to get this done before it frays i'm using another natural fiber here and i've got about for this i'm not going to need all this but i've got about you can't see it all but about two feet worth of rope so here's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna make me a little loop put that rope down so just take it and make a loop longer than what you're going to be uh, wrapping just kind of wrap it back on itself or fold it back on itself then what we're going to do we're going to take personally i like to start at the end of the rope and the reason is because if i don't know how far i'm going to go i want to make sure i have enough space so i'm going to take in the loop end i'm going to put somewhere up here right along that rope and then I'm going to just let it kind of fall back, keep it side by side, put your hand over top of it. And then I'm going to get a little closer. I'm going to take this and I'm going to start once again about three quarters to a half inch down. And we'll wrap it. You see I come over. And then what you want to do is come back on itself. That's going to create a nice bind. Then it's really just a matter of continuing the same motion. Just keeping it tight right next to itself. Okay, so now we're near the end and you remember that loop we made? This is where that comes into play. You take the running end of your whip and put it through that loop and just kind of lay it down there. Then you're going to come down here where we left our the other end of our loop and we're just going to pull it and you can see it's going to pull it tight and it's going to pull it let me get this around there so you can see it's going to pull it underneath just a little bit so let's just pull that snug so you can see how i've gone underneath my whipping at that point you're pretty much done all you're going to do is take your knife or a pair of scissors and you're going to snip that off there and snip this off here and you've got a whipped rope go ahead pause the video give it a try restart the video and try it again that's how you whip a rope that does it for our first video in this series of rope work kind of the basics next video we're going to jump into tying the square knot but we're also going to talk a little bit about ropes in general Thanks for tuning in to this video. Tune in regularly for more gear reviews and more of my adventures in the, uh, the wilds uh, around me. Make sure you take time to comment below in the comment section. I do my best to read as many as I can. Also, you'll see my picture over here to my left. Make sure you click that to subscribe to the channel. And over here to the right, you'll see another video to check out. Appreciate it. See you next time.